Hey everyone, this is amateur meteorologist Cameron Fry on this Wednesday night, and as promised, I'm going to deliver a special winter weather update video. In the next couple minutes, we're going to talk about my thoughts on the rest of December and also get into January and February. Going back to my last update in late September when I talked about my winter weather predictions, some things have remained the same in terms of my ideas on how the winter weather will progress and develop. Uh, some things have changed slightly. As usual, as always the case, some things happen in November that tends to set the tone. So consider this kind of like my final, my absolute, my ultimate winter weather forecast. So without further ado, let's get to the charts mapped and I'll explain everything. We'll start off by looking at the NAO index forecast. And you can see it's forecast to be predominantly negative, and that's good. A negative NAO means that cold air from Canada can stream southward into the eastern United States and it looks like it will stay moderately negative and that's good that's one thing in our favor for sustaining cold and snow or the potential for snow and ice the PNA unfortunately is also negative now a negative PNA unlike an AO it's not good for snow and cold weather fans like myself um, that means that you have a ridge going on in the east that's partially caused by a trough digging in the west so the west gets the cooler air and it's placed displaced over there and while higher heights and higher temperatures are forced eastward and you can see the PNA dips down a little bit it starts to moderate towards Christmas towards slightly negative sort of way negative that's good slightly encouraging we'll see what happens but we want that to get closer to neutral and ideally uh, in positive territory it may reach that point in January we'll see now this is the AO cousin of the NAO both play a part in allowing cold air to be driven southward where we want it. Um, so a negative AO is good, a negative NAO is good, a negative PNA is bad in a nutshell. AO kind of plays more of a part. It, it, it kind of forces, basically when you have a negative AO, it means that you have higher heights or higher pressures at the poles, which means lower pressures has to go somewhere. And that lower pressure, which oftentimes is associated to what we in weather world called polar vortex has to go somewhere where it moves is the key and what we try to forecast um, that's the wild card but when it's negative it means cold air has to go southward and North America is a prime candidate for receiving that cold air as you can see here on the left hand side of your screen you can see the little omega sign that's the omega block corresponds to higher temp anomalies and the colder blues re represent colder temp anomalies and you can see the troughing right off the west coast uh, responsible for upping and upping the amplitude of that ridge in the uh, Great Plains up to the northwest and western Canada. Um, that translates into milder air for here, and the colder air is forced uh, to the ca uh, Canadian U.S. border in the northeast. This is more reflective where we've been lately, or where things are headed in the next couple of days. We have that ridge moving a little bit eastward. Um, right under Alaska there in the colder air migrating off the West Pacific coast into the western United States um, but that puts the US or the eastern US in the mild sector in the warm sector that's why it's been so incredibly warm uh, the first week of December very large anomalies uh, 15 to 20 degrees below normal for most spots now I would say that for Tennessee the NAO and the PNA are bigger determining factors for cold and snow in this in our region but there's one thing in addition to all that that's going against us um, along with the PNA being a negative factor the PDO is negative which is also a negative factor uh, positive PNA corresponds to El Nino type conditions which in the southeast usually corresponds to cooler temperatures we saw this in 2009-2010 now in a typical El Nino or which corresponds to a positive PDO you have drier conditions here and with a negative you have wetter conditions and warmer temperatures which is actually more La Nina like um, people ask me will we be in a La Nina or El Nino we're actually neutral this winter we're not gonna have either um, but conditions at least from what it looks like now the entire winter will be wetter than normal so conditions are gonna reflect more La Nina winter even though we're technically not in a La Nina and real quickly I will mention that snow cover is not the best for the northern US uh, you can see the red indicating below average snow cover and the purple is not that far north above average so just a matter of time when 
cold air starts to penetrate further south, um, that red will go away at time. Now I got this off the Weather Channel yesterday, but I want to talk about kind of what's going on. Again, you can see the the southeast ridge um, going on, keeping us warm and really dominating the eastern half of the United States. Um, but in the coming days, as we approach Monday of next week, colder air from con co uh, continental polar air will start to nose its way southward across the plains, and eventually we're going to receive that. We may not get the core of it but there'll be notably cooler temperatures um, in comparison to what we've been seeing this week, which is great news if you want it to feel like Christmas time. We're going to go out even further in time and keep in mind the time frame of the 18th and 19th of December. This is an, another model, like the GFS, it's called the GEFS, and you can see the blue and the green, that's below temp anomalies, and you can see that rain-snow line, that 540 decameter line, that orange line there, it's below Tennessee. So that's interesting to watch. There's some consistency developing as far as a uh, trough dig in the east and a ridge going on in the west, which would basically be a, a pattern flip-flop to what we're seeing now. Let's hop over and to uh, see what the European models are suggesting for the week of December 17th to 23rd and seasonable average conditions, which is good. We're not in the, the mild sector. The warm air is suppressed southward. Um, so seasonable seems to be the key word, and we go on to the next week, Christmas week, and even the New Year's, again, seasonable. That warm, mild air is westward, where the ridge is kind of at its peak. We're, even though we're not in a cold or snowy zone, we're probably, I would lean in the direction of that, based on the progression of where models are going. I also would like to point out that just, Regardless of if the colder air really does make it south for time for Christmas and if we see cooler temperatures invade the rest of December, the, the pattern is trending more active. We're going to see a lot more rain than we did in the last part of October and all of November where we only had like an inch and a half of rain. Um, we're going to see a lot more rain and you can see uh, next Tuesday on the 11th, that's one pattern, get to Wednesday the 19th. Notice that day again, very wet, very stormy, again, very active. This is not snow, this is rain. We're going to see several inches of rain in the coming weeks, which is good. Just to put a dent in any future forming drought, we'll take that around here. Now let's go, let's hop over GFS 850 millibar temps, which is a good indicator of precip type. And again, we are approaching not that far from the negative 10 degrees Celsius line, which means that if we were to squeeze out any moisture, we could see some flurries, not out of the question. But again, this is 312 hours out. This is voodoo. Like, your guess is as good as mine, and not a whole lot of skill involved, as James Spann would say. And again, we're in the 372, 384 hour time frame. Again, that 540 line is not terribly far from us, but it is north of us, so we'll say that if these were high temps we were looking at. We would be in the 40s to maybe 50, but that's seasonable to slightly below seasonal this time of year. I want to look at uh, this projected snow depth for the storm that's going to hit the Midwest and Ohio River Valley and the Great Lakes early next week, so Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. And these numbers are way overdone. There's no way this amount of snow is going to fall, but I agree with the placement of the snow. And it just shows you that winter is coming despite we're not in the most favorable pattern currently for snow and cold. Just being honest, you could still get these transient shots of cold air and then moderates quickly and doesn't last, which it seemed to do in 2010-11 in December and January. If you could remember two years ago how we had plenty of cold to work with and snow to work with. I'll close out this video by focusing on the Canadian and CMC, which indicates that we're going to see some troughiness into the picture starting next week. Kind of too early to tell if it's going to stick around. I would say it's not going to stick around too long, but the pattern is growing more favorable as December progresses, that we'll see more of these cold shots. And I think as we approach January, just looking big picture here, these cold shots will get longer and longer and more stronger. But right now, we've had so much mild air, like the next couple of weeks are really going to be about pushing that mild air away and kind of weakening the warm air force that we've been enduring. Whoops, I got one more graphic to show you. This is for January. 
Uh, the green and the blue represent colder temp anomalies, not much of the lower 48s above average temps, which is quite the contrast from December. This is good. I expect February to be similar, um, both months averaging a couple degrees below normal. So there you have it. Those are my thoughts about December, and I didn't really talk too much about January and February. It's just to recap December, uh, we have a negative NAO and AO, which is good, but it's being combated by a negative PNA, which is keeping the bulk of the troughing and the cooler temp anomalies out west. So really, in these in most winter patterns, there's a tail of two days that goes on. If the west is warm, the east is cool and vice versa. Rarely do you see a pattern where everyone is cold or everyone is warm, although last year seemed like everyone was warm. Um, we'll finish December a couple degrees above normal for the month. But part of that is because this first week has been so warm, I think starting Sunday, Monday, we're going to have a very average, seasonable December with some shots. It's possible we could see some flurries and snow showers. I would say Cumberland Plateau, Appalachian Mountains in North Carolina, Tennessee, you could definitely see some snow as this month progresses. But across the board, across the valleys, I would say January and February will be the best bets for snow and sustained cold as the pattern starts to change. We had a cooler fall, which was good. November finished a couple of degrees below normal, which is good. We're just kind of in this period right now where we can't really seem to shake the milder warm temps and things are not looking that great that it's going to change anytime soon. But on the horizon, there's hope and a lot of Mets are catching on to this. And we'll and what basically we're going to see flickers of what's to come in January and February in the coming weeks. We'll see some transient cold shots the last couple of days will warm back up. Um, but we'll see the warmth. We're going to not see a whole lot of 70s the rest of the month. In fact, I think that after this week, Kiss the 70s goodbye. We'll see some 60s here and there. But we'll go back and seeing highs more in the 40s and 50s and lows below freezing. Interesting to note, last November, 15 of the 30 days, we had lows at or below freezing. That is very unusual. We had very cold air at night. Part of that had to do with the drier than average conditions, which corresponded to clear skies and radiational cooling. And um, But we're going to see that change as well. Drier conditions yielding to more precipitation. We're going to see a couple of storm systems in the next couple of weeks that has the potential to jump between half an inch of rain to an inch of rain even more than that in isolated areas. So I'll keep you posted as normal. Stay tuned. And if um, any, in the case of severe weather or extreme winter weather or something changes, I'll keep you posted and put, and put a special video up for you all to see. All right. We'll have a wonderful Thursday. It's a very special day tomorrow. It's my 27th birthday. Three cubed. can't believe I'm 27. It's crazy. Um, I definitely feel a lot younger than that. But anyway, blessings, and I will talk to you soon. Cam out.